that uh, two approach to derive mechanics equations. Uh, one is from equation of equilibrium, that's the force balance. Um, and uh, then there's uh, another approach is to based on the energy conservation. So, and then you derive everything based on energy. Uh, both methods work. Sometimes one method um, is more convenient than the others. Uh, if you can solve a problem using both methods, they should come to exact the same solution. Um, but for a fraction mechanics, <coughs> actually the, <coughs> the equilibrium and stress method, that's what we have been working on up to now. Uh, they are, sometimes they could get quite <coughs> complicated. So energy methods, some, for some cases, you will see that actually is a little bit easier. Um, the math is relatively um, straightforward. There is no differential equation most of the times. OK, uh, so before we go into that, let's do a review of work and the strain energy. And then that essentially is two types of energies that eventually balance out. Um, so work by, done by a, so the first one is, what is work? Right? Uh, in this sense is um, a work done by a force by move things around. Um, So the definition of a work is um, a force does work when it undergoes a displacement dx along the same direction of the force. So basically, if I move my pen from here to here, I'm doing work, OK? But if I move my pen from here to here in the back, I actually didn't do any work. <laughs> so, um, that's a easy visual thing to see. So basically, you have a body, and you have a force. Um, if your force move this thing by a distance, using the yes, um, then your um, you. Is equal to P times dx. So that's very straightforward. So the force times the distance it moved is the work done. So in this case, it, it does not care what that the body is, whether the body is very heavy or very light. It's only related to how big the force is in the hull, uh, how much distance it has traveled. Um, so that's for a rigid body. Uh, for a elastic body, of course, then you have deformation. So the same principle. So if I have a rigid body, and I have, in this case, my force might be a distributed force, I will say that Qx applied to an area of Ds. And uh, then it's, because I applied this uh, force on the, the body, maybe deformed by a distance of delta S along the direction of the force. So in this case, um, my I'm using a D because I'm looking at the 
very small area. Um, so it's going to be my force times my delta S. And then my force is equal to Q of Q of S. So that's the work done by that small force on that point. And of course, the total work done to the body then would be, depends on, so it should be along the surface of the, um, of the elastic body for the integration. So So that's basically the uh, explanation of the work by a force on an elastic body, on an arbitrary elastic body. So if you have, uh, say, a simple bar, and I have a load P applied to it, I um, assume the original length of that is L. Um, so when I apply the load, this bar is going to extend by a distance or length of theta. So the load will be the load times that <coughs> theta. So over that body um, so that's that uh, but for each load actually the deformation is different because in this case the body doesn't just move by a distance Deformed, so, so some area deforms less, some deform, de, de, uh, deforms more. So, but the overall length that deformed is better. Okay. Uh, so, of course, you know the load based on from the stress point of view is going to be kind of, uh, sigma times a times delta. So, um, and then my sigma equal to P over A. In this case, actually, it's related to that. Uh, so that is where the hooks or times the signal is equal to the epsilon. And so you get your so your signal. So from that, you plug that in. So you need is equal to So you plug that into that. Um, so of course, assume that term is constant along the length. You can take that out, and then that's just the score. <coughs> um, I turn the page and I should go over here. Um, and then from here, I still, because delta right now I'm not solving it, so I still want to kind of relate this back to P. So I have my P is equal to A over L is data. So when I combine these two, I get U is equal to P. Maybe I should go down to the next step. So in this case, by combining those two equations, I get my 
view is because of one over three p times p. <coughs> so this is the work done by uh, the force and the extension power. So it's, uh, uh, it's not p times delta because as you stretch it, not all of the bars that move by delta, right? So it's an increment. That's where the integration can be, and that's where the one half can be. So basically, if you pull the the bar for the last one, the end of the bar by a distance e. The total energy, the total work you've done through the bar is around over two, one half of p times that data. Okay, uh, so for the same thing, so this is quite simple. I uh, just have uh, no more force applied to the bar. Um, the other case you may need later is work done by a moment. So in this case, the moment, uh, the work done by a moment is similar or is comparable to a work done by the force. So it's basically is uh, integration of the angle. The moment, what the moment does is change the angle of the body. So it's your moment. In this case, your moment could be uh, a function of theta times and <coughs> that is something that when they come back and they use it later. Okay, uh, so that's one part is basically the external force applied to an elastic body. And because of the deformation of the body, the force will generate or, or produce work uh, by, because of the information. Uh, so the second part is the body itself, since it's an elastic body, uh, it will store the strain energy, right? So it's like a rubber band. It will stretch it. When you release it, it will, it will bounce back. So that's the release of the stored energy. Um, so strain energy basically is um, the work done by an uh, external force. It has to go somewhere. Um, it's converted. Uh, internal work or uh, strain energy. That's essentially is what we talk about energy balance. So if you put work into the body, the energy has to do something. And in this case, that energy becomes the strain energy that is stored in the body. Um, so if we again look at a bar, and we have the force applied to that bar, which is kind of equivalent to what we had drawn before. And we know that, so in this case, we know the stress is F over A, and uh, the deformation is that over L. That's fundamental deformation of stress and the strain. 
And so in this case, and based on the work done by the force, we know that it's F times theta is one over two. Is in that equation, my force is sigma x times a, and uh, from that, my deformation is straight times l. And so, the elastic energy or the strain energy is essentially one over true sigma times epsilon times a times l. Um, so you can see the work actually is related to stress and the strain, right? And the, these two are related to uh, Young's modulus, so that's what we call um, strain energy times volume. So now the volume of the material coming in is depends on the volume that the energy you stored is proportional to the volume. Um, so that sometimes is not a good thing. Um, so then we define another term to get rid of the volume. So that's the strain energy density. And strain energy density basically is the total uh, total strain energy. Per volume, that means. So that's where density can be, right? So it's uh, something, a parameter over the entire volume, or normalized with the entire, uh, entire volume. So in this case, we use a lowercase u to represent the uh, strain energy density, and so that will be. Uh, so that's the strain energy density. So this is just a simple example. In this case, we have a UV actual strain. Uh, for um, for general case, um, for general stress and the strain conditions, we have six components of. Um, the stress and the six components of strain. So usually we have sigma ij and the epsilon ij in this case. Um, but this time, we should, everybody should know what sigma ij, ij and the epsilon ij stands for. Um, so then the general form will be the energy will be just one over two sigma ij and epsilon ij. Um, in this case, uh, I'm using a tensor expression. When you see this true subscript repeat, that means I have superposition. So this essentially is equal to sometimes you see that. So essentially, um, it just goes through. All the, um, you basically find all the six stress components and the six strain components and they add them together. Um, multiply them and they add them together. That's giving you the um, general uh, strain energy density method. Um, 